Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to reveal all three tenses which you have learned so far in this course. Present simple, present continuous, and past simple. Let's get started. First of all, what you need to do is to complete these sentences with the correct form of the verb in brackets. Present simple or present continuous. I'm going to give you around 10 to 15 seconds to accomplish this. Of course, you can always pause the video and take more time to do it if you want to. Have you finished? Let's check out the answer together. 1. The number of medical students at my university. Here you need to use the present continuous because it is talking about a situation which is changing or developing. The number of medical students at my university is rising. Number 2. Remember we use the present simple, often with verbs of senses and perception, to talk about feelings and reactions at the moment of speaking. The verb enjoy is one of them. Therefore, we need to use the present simple here, enjoys. In addition, we use the present simple for future reference in subordinate clauses after words like when, before, as soon as, if, and whether. Thus, we're going to use the present simple here. Has. John enjoys playing football when he has time. 3. We use the present simple to talk about general facts that we think are true and permanent at the present time. Therefore, we need to use the present simple here. David lives in Qatar. That is the fact. Furthermore, we also use the present simple to describe an activity that happens regularly. When something happens almost every day, that means it happens regularly. Thus, we need to use the present simple here. Works. David lives in Qatar, where he was born, but he works in Dubai almost every day. Four. Nowadays, more and more people leave the villages to work in the city. Something is changing in the villages. Hence, we must use the present continuous in this case. Nowadays, more and more people are leaving the villages to work in the city. 5. Katie study English because she wants to be a flight attendant. Remember we use the present continuous to talk about an activity which is in progress, but not exactly now. Katie is studying English. That activity is in progress, but it doesn't mean Katie is studying English right now. She's just in the progress of doing that. On the other hand, we use the present simple with some particular verbs which express thoughts and feelings such as want. Therefore, we need to use the present simple here. She wants to be a flight attendant. 6. People's reading habits change because they read more on the internet and fewer books. When we talk about a situation which is changing or developing, we use the present continuous. Hence, this sentence should be People's reading habits are changing because they are reading more on the internet and fewer books. One more thing, we use the present simple to talk about general facts that we think are true and permanent at the present time. Thus, we can also use the present simple in the second clause of this sentence. They read more on the internet and fewer books. The reason is that is the fact nowadays and it's so true that people tend to read more on the internet. In the next assignment, please complete these sentences with the past simple of the verbs in brackets. I'm going to give you around 10 to 15 seconds to accomplish this. Of course, you can always pause the video and take more time to do it if you want to. Have you finished? Before giving you the answer, there's something I'd like to teach you first. When dealing with the past simple, please keep in mind that there are two types of verbs, regular and irregular. Let me explain a little bit for those who don't really understand the difference between these two. First of all, let's talk about regular verbs. Most verbs in English are regular. The question is, how do you make the past simple form of regular verbs? There are six rules which you need to know. Rule number one. Most regular verbs add ed to the base form to make the past simple form. For example, we have the base form of a regular verb, work. 
To make the past simple form of work, we just simply add a D to it. Worked. Worked. Rule number two. If the base form already ends in E, then D is added to make the past form. For instance, the base form move ends in E. To make the past simple form of move, D is added. Moved. Moved. Rule number three. If the base form ends in a consonant plus Y, then Y changes to I, E, D to make the past form. For example, the base form study ends in a consonant D plus Y, then Y changes to I, E, D to make the past form like this. Studied. Studied. Rule number four. This one is a little bit complicated. Please pay attention. I'm going to speak very slowly so that you can follow. If the base form ends in a vowel followed by a single consonant, and if the last syllable is stressed, then the consonant is doubled. For instance, the base form commit ends in a vowel I followed by a single consonant T, and the last syllable mit is stressed. Then the consonant T is doubled, committed, committed. However, if the last syllable is not stressed, then the consonant is not doubled. For example, the base form develop ends in a vowel O followed by a single consonant P, and the last syllable lup is not stressed. Actually, the second syllable there is stressed in this case, not the last syllable lup. Then the consonant P is not doubled, developed, developed. Please keep in mind the stress syllables are underlined in this table. Rule number five. The consonant is doubled if the base form ends in a vowel plus L, whether the last syllable is stressed or not. For instance, the base form travel ends in a vowel E plus L. So the consonant is doubled, traveled, traveled. In this case, the first syllable tra is stressed, but the last syllable vo is not stressed. That is in British English. However, in American English, traveled is spelled with one L, not with double L like in British English. Let me give you another example. The base form Control ends in a vowel O plus L. Hence, the consonant is doubled. Controlled. Controlled. In this situation, the last syllable, troll, is stressed. Please keep in mind that stress syllables are underlined in this table. Rule number six. In regular one syllable verbs, with a single vowel followed by a consonant, we double the final consonant when adding a D to make the past simple. For example, the base form stop ends in a single vowel O followed by a consonant P. We double the final consonant P when adding a D to make the past simple. Stopped. Stopped. Wow, that's quite a lot, right? I know at this moment you might have a question like, how the hell can I remember all of these rules? There are so many of them. Actually, you don't have to, in my opinion. What you need to do is just to read and understand all of these rules. The rest is all about practice. If you use the regular verbs in both their base form and past simple form frequently, you will surely remember them even with or without memorizing the rules. For example, if you use the words commit and committed a lot, then the next time you use them, you will automatically remember that you need to double the consonant T when adding a D to commit to make the past simple form committed. I'm very sure after a long time, you won't be able to remember some complicated rules such as rule number four, if the base form ends in a vowel followed by a single consonant, blah, 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 all kinds of things anymore. In fact, it'll be much easier for you guys to just memorize the way to write those two words and forget all about the rules. 
I think grammar is only good for checking whether you have used the right words or structures or correct repositions or things like that, as long as you have time. However, when you speak with someone directly, you don't have time to think about those grammar rules at all. You just simply use what you're familiar with the most. That's how you can speak naturally and fluently like a native English speaker. So keep practicing all the time and forget all about those heavy rules. Next, let's talk about irregular verbs. Irregular verbs are the ones that do not follow the system of adding D or a D to the end of the word to form the past simple tense. In short, they don't follow any certain rule at all. That's why they are called irregular. Makes sense, right? There's only one way to remember the irregular verbs, learn by heart. Fortunately, there are not so many of them, just a few hundred I suppose. I'm going to teach you some of them just for this particular assignment. The past simple form of build is built, fall, fell, go, went, rise, rose, speak, spoke, write, wrote. All right, now you understand both regular and irregular verbs. Let's check out the answer to the assignment together. Here we go. 1. The Tao Council built a bridge across the river to the island. 2. PewDiePie wrote more than 15 books during his life. 3. In my country, many people stopped smoking when the price of cigarettes went up. 4. In this region, most people spoke the local language 100 years ago. 5. In 2004, the company developed a new technique using digital technology. 6. The change happened because more immigrants arrived in the country. 7. The storm which occurred at the end of January destroyed several houses. 8. The number of students in higher education rose until 2003 and then fell the following year. Did you get all the correct answers? I hope so. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and understand the three common tenses in English, present simple, present continuous, and past simple. I see you in the next video.